there's one. There's one right there, little spinnerbait bass. <laughs> Come on, baby. <laughs> there we go, folks. Look at that. Look at that. Little spinnerbait bass. Come on. Come on. You're done. Gotcha. <laughs> Talk about catching us off guard. <laughs> It's starting to sprinkle a little bit. We were thinking, man, we better get a rain suit on that camera. But I caught a fish right there. We have a low pressure and we're here at Lake Pleasant, folks. And uh, man, I'll tell you what, when you, get a, when you get a little bit of cloud cover and get back into the backs of some of these cuts, we're working our way to the backs of some of these cuts and uh, just to see where the fish are located right now. Got on the water this morning and water temperature was 54 degrees. Uh, very possible that my graph could be a little off on the temperature part of it, but in saying that, we're here in March. So these fish are gonna start moving up. It's cold, there's no doubt about it. I got a couple of layers of shirts on today, but uh, one thing I love to do this time of year is start working my way towards the backs of cuts and see what's going on. This water at Lake Pleasant right in this area is like ultra clear. Uh, makes it a little tougher. We need a little breeze. It helps to have a little breeze, a little cloud cover when you're gonna throw a spinner bait, but it's a great search lure. And coming off these bushes and these trees that are coming off into the water, points, working your way back, we're just going to try to struggle to find out, you know, a lot of times it is a struggle to find out where the bass are. Do I stay out on points or do I go to the backs of cuts? Well, let me tell you something. The easiest way to find that out is to take a, take a cove you want to go back into, like we're back in Coles here, and uh, started, just started right along the walls here. And we'll work our way towards the back. And we'll probably do the same in Humbug and things like that and uh, the fish will tell us about where they're at. But we'll do a little searching, a little playing and see what happens. Uh, might throw a soft jerk bait. It's a great time of year for a soft jerk bait. But uh, I wanted to pick up the spinner bait so I could move down the bank a little faster and just uh, see what's going on. Take a look, see the water clarity. It might get a little bit muddier back towards the back, a little dirtier. Uh, if we find a little bit more stained water, the spinner bait might work a little better back there if the water's calmer. So uh, little things like that make a big difference when you go into the spring. You don't just automatically go straight to the backs of cuts. A lot of times they use this as a channel to go back and forth from the points to the backs of cuts to spawn. So we're getting close and uh, kind of a pre-spawn thing, I think. Uh, and we'll move our way back. The sun's gonna pop out and it's gonna come in. We're, we're expecting bad weather today, but uh, hey, you can't always get out on the good days. Get out on some of these days when the front is just starting to come in. And a lot of times you'll catch yourself a lot of fish. You know, sun's starting to come out. Breeze ain't blowing quite like I was hoping it would for the spinner bait. We've ran quite a bit of this bank down through here. But one thing I did want to mention is when you're coming down to these little cuts like this, we're, we're in coals again, like I said. And then uh, <clears throat> this little cut right here is really cool because it's got a deep ledge to it on the inside. A lot of guys will just fish the shallow water on each side, the bushes. And this time of year, something really important to do is to go ahead and do that, but always make sure before you go in there, make a long cast and throw right in the middle of the cut. There's brush down there too, but the thing is, is let the bait fall a little bit and just slow roll it out of there. A lot of times big females will sit down there, you know, when they're start trying to move up or something, right in the middle of the cut. And a lot of times if you just kind of slow roll through there, you might be able to get a little bonus fish. So it's very important to, uh, to allow yourself to fish, before you actually put the boat in there, allow yourself to fish that, that area and see if you can get something to bite out of there. was in the bush. That's a buck bass, folks. <laughs> I had to go to a little Texas rig and flip it in these bushes a little bit. I was trying to figure out if these fish had moved shallow or not. We're in a little bit of stained water. A little Lake Pleasant bass. Anyways, what I did was decide to come out, try to find some 
areas that uh, maybe I can throw a little Texas rig in and uh, see if I can pull some of these fish out of the trees or something. Couldn't get them on the spinnerbait, couldn't get them on the super fluke or the, the uh, soft jerk bait. So I've moved to, to uh, and it's getting towards the afternoon a little bit. We got out a little late, but figured I'd just go to a little craw here. It's a uh, Crazy Legs Chigger Craw and uh, Green Pumpkin. You know, I'm just kind of tossing it out there, dragging it on some of these rocks, hitting shallow by the bushes. I'm just kind of dragging it across the bottom. I don't have the weight pegged, and the reason for that is because I'm just kind of throwing out and dragging it over rocks, things like that. Now, if I'm in there flipping, I'm gonna peg the weight. Got him, I got that one. Oh, that's a better fish. <laughs> I was trying to back off. I didn't wanna, didn't wanna get in there. That one was with a male. <laughs> really pleasant bass. <laughs> oh my goodness, now those are the kind of fish we are looking for, folks. That's what I'm talking about, that little Texas rig. You do a little searching with that thing. My goodness, that is fun. Oh, look at that. Beautiful Lake Pleasant bass. Let's get a snapshot of this one real quick. Got it. All right, we'll let it go real quick. Now, let me tell you something. Really important, man, to, to check them shallows out, man, when that sun starts popping out. They get in trouble when I start seeing that. They're in trouble. That's, uh, that's good news for me, let me tell you. Uh, just threw that Texas rig out. I got bit. I got bit. And what happened is, when I was bringing it back, a lot of times when they're when the fish are like in shallows on beds like that, they just pretty much inhale the bait and spit it back out of their bed. That's what they do. They're, they're not hitting out of a feed mode at all. So I threw back in there and I saw the fish turn. I could actually see the white of the fish. I'm like, that's a little bit better fish. But I couldn't see exactly where the bed was. I just saw in that little shade pocket over there. So I just threw out there. Dragged it across, felt the bite again, set the hook, and boom, there you have it. So, fishing around these brush piles, finding these little pebbled rocks, and if you can look at the bank here, look at this. Right here we have this pebbled, this is the, the, the perfect stuff bass love to, to build beds in and spawn. This is what you look for. And this is why a lot of times when you're doing like fast retrieve baits, like say a spinner bait, things like that, if you don't hit in the right spot or you land right on it, you could spook them sometimes because they're shallow and a lot of times when they first move up shallow, they get real spooky. With a spinnerbait, they're not going to chase it out that far. It's got to come right across the bed, boom, they'll strike it. And I think that's how we caught the first fish this morning, but uh, on that spinnerbait. I think we just put it in the right strike zone right there. We'll run around here and see if we can't catch some more. I'm ready. Now I've got my spot lock on. This, this is the time of year where your power poles become very valuable to you. Because man, you get in the shallow water like this, gotta be ready within power poles if you start seeing those fish shallow. I'm still in the mode of just making some long casts and, and uh, kind of bumping it across the rocks. If I see something light in the water, you know, like you see all this rock right here and run across the bed, then we'll throw at it. Got her. <laughs> and you ate it, didn't you? And you ate it. Get up in here. <laughs> Look at that. Ate it. And voila. That little thing in there just twists. Doesn't have anything to hurt. It's all round for the fish. Didn't make it bleed. The fish is fine. And voila. Watch this. See you, baby. Go, go, go. <laughs> oh my goodness, and that wasn't the big one. I saw a bigger one swimming in there as we were coming up, and I'm like, boy, that fish is kind of deep. Got him. Well, that's a good fish, too. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about right there. <laughs> Had to have a little bite of my sandwich. 
and then I come in here and catch that little dude. That's exactly what we're looking for. Come on, son. <laughs> come on. Come on. All right. Oh, look at that. Beautiful Lake Pleasant bass. They're moving up, folks. Moving up. Beautiful bass. Just took a little bite of my sandwich and figured I'll throw right up there. It looks so beautiful up in there. We'll let it go. Got up into the shallow stuff and started seeing that I had an opportunity to fish the backs of some of this stuff. Didn't want to take the boat in there and spook anything. So I just made a long cast up in there. Let it fall to the bottom and boy, he thumped it right there. Tell you what, you can't go wrong with a little small compact bait. Something you can cast, get up in there with. Just a little Texas rig. Now here's what's really cool is, like I told you before, I'm not, I'm not taking and, you know, putting a bobber stop or something above the, the weight. I'm letting it, I'm just kind of throwing out and dragging it over the rocks a lot. So up in the shallows, but I do put a little bead on it. You can see I put a little bead on it. And then I tie the hook on, but before I tie the hook on, I put a little, just a little uh, bobber stop right there. That little piece of rubber keeps the glass from banging on the, the knot. And then I'm using a, a little uh, three-aught, that's a three-aught, a little three-aught uh, owner wide gap hook there, you know, and uh, there you have it little quarter ounce tungsten weight. That's what that is. And we're good to go. Now I'm using 17 pound line. And that way when I get into the brush, things like that, I can get these fish out. So that, that 17 pound gets it out good. Of course, you gotta match that up with a good old heavy Elite Series Taipan rod. And I'll tell you what, it makes it for a lot of fun. So what I'll do is I'll fan cast in here. I got one there. I'll try to toss it around here a little bit just to, just to see if anything else is in there that might want to bite. These fish are moving shallow. But if you don't get right on top of them too, which is really nice, if you could make the long cast, uh, you don't have to be right on top of these fish and see them. And you know, you, you grab a nice bait like this, something they'll bite. And I'll tell you, you drag it across the bottom and you might even catch some of those deeper, deeper fish that are out of ways. Hey folks, for my tip of the week, one thing that's really important to remember, early in the spring, when the bass just start moving up, and I mean when they start moving up, it's always fun to get real shallow and, and get your boat on top of them and things like that, but they get real spooky when they first move up. And so one of the things we're doing today, and I think one of the reasons we're so successful, is because we're making longer casts to catch these fish to where the boat's not going in and spooking the fish. Because anytime I've seen any fish up shallow today that we've accidentally, you know, come in close with, they're scattering. And so when they first start moving up, they're a little timid about being up there in the shallows as it is. So it's best to stay back, throw that Texas rig, make some casts. It's not that you can't get in there. If you see a bed or you spook one off, you can always, you know, go down and then come back after he relaxes a little bit and you know where to cast. But to get right on top of them right now is kind of a no-no. Besides that, you're getting the smaller ones that are getting up there. So if you, if you fish this Texas rig, throw it up there and kind of work it back a little bit, some of those bigger fish will be sitting out waiting to move in and you'll catch some of those bigger fish. That's my tip of the week. Got him. Oh, that's a good one, son. Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, look at that fish, folks. <laughs> Oh, Texas rig, Lake Pleasant Bass. <laughs> Get in here, Moby. Get out of that tree. That's a good one, folks. That's a good one. Come on, son. Oh, no, 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 no. Come on. Come on. Ah, yeah. Look at that. That's a big old female. <laughs> Just right up there, man. Oh, my gosh. Look, you got to see this. You're not going to believe what I'm looking at. This thing has a, a big old, oh no, I broke off my, my hook. Oh, I caught so many fish on it. I'm gonna have to retie a hook in there. Let me get this out of your face, baby. Okay, this fish has a tail. I don't know if we can get a picture of it or not. A tail of another fish in there. Look at that. Look at that. 
one of them gizzard shad or something in there. Look at that, or a little carp. <laughs> Look at that. That is insane. <laughs> All right, baby, we'll let you go. Folks, that is a, just a gorgeous, big old fish. That's what we're trying to catch right there, right there. That's what that Texas rig will get you if you slow down a little bit. Oh, go on, baby. See ya. I'll tell you, this time of year can be really rewarding. And that's why it's important, too, to understand that, you know, the little buck bass move up real shallow, you know, earlier. And a lot of times, if you just be a little patient and kind of fish the stuff out just a little deeper. Now, this has got, what I like about this little cut is it's got warmer water, but it's kind of got some steeper banks on it. So those big females will get in there a little bit closer to the shoreline. That is a blast. That's why you use 17 pound test right there. Get them babies out of there. <laughs> All right. Got us a little one way up there shallow. <laughs> well, not quite the size fish I wanted to catch, but we were right up way shallow up there. Come on, buddy. Oh. <laughs> oh, well, I guess I guess we have to be re-humbled a little bit. Come on. Ah, get in here. <laughs> Sheesh. All right. There we go. Not quite how I wanted to end the day, but you know what? It's so fun about fishing? Catching, obviously, but you know, it has a way of humbling you sometimes after catching a few big ones to get you back to the little ones. But that's not a bad fish. That's still a keeper bass in any tournament. And uh, yeah, it'd be fun. Just dragging that, dragging that, uh, that craw. I'll tell you what, folks, grab yourself these chigger craws. You'll have a lot of fun with them. I think the safe bet early in the year like this is to go with a good green pumpkin color like this. And uh, you don't have to go real heavy on the weight. Like I said, uh, quarter ounce is really good. If you get a little bit more wind and you want, you know, you're having troubles casting, sometimes that 3 8 ounce, but 3 8 ounce will get hung up on you a lot more in the wood. This quarter ounce comes out pretty good making those long casts. 17 pound test uh, fluorocarbon line and you're good to go. You know, I love Lake Pleasant. A lot of people here in the state call this lake unpleasant, but I always love coming down early in the spring. It's always one of my first lakes I like to come to. Thanks for joining us on the water. We'll see you next week. I'm Johnny Johnson. <laughs> now, see, that's what I'm talking about, folks. <laughs>